few days ago, I made a video called 7 Greatest Players Arsenal Signed in Winter Transfer Window. So if you haven't already, feel free to check that out. But today, I wanted to talk about the 7 Worst Players Arsenal Signed in Winter Transfer Window. So I started researching and put in a lot of effort to try and find out who are the worst players we signed in January. Bear in mind, there were a lot of candidates, but in the end, in my opinion, these seven deserve to end up on the final list. So without any further ado, let's get into it. And of course, like always, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Okay, let's get into it. Number 7, Christian Bielik. Bielik signed for Arsenal in 2015 from Polish club Legia Warszawa. And believe it or not, he was tipped to become the Gunners' next Patrick Vieira, but never made a single first team appearance for the club. Interestingly, Arsenal still made profit with him, as he was bought for 2.4 million pounds and was sold to Derby County for 10 million pounds in 2019. During his four year spell with Arsenal, he was constantly out on loan, first to Birmingham, then Walsall, then Charlton Athletic, before permanently leaving and signing for Derby County. Today, 26 year old Bielik plays for Birmingham City in the Championship. Number 6 Thomas Aisfeld. When Aisfeld joined Arsenal from Borussia Dortmund in 2012 for a fee of less than half a million, Wenger described him as having the right attitude and technical ability to be a valuable addition to the squad. And he didn't stop there, as he also described him as a quieter version of Arsenal legend Robert Pires, saying, he's a Pires type, he appears to be in the box without being nosy and appearing suddenly, when he's there, he finishes well. Two appearances and two and a half years later, the German was sitting on the bench for Fulham in the championship. After signing for Arsenal in 2012, he was permanently sold to Fulham only two years later, in 2014. Ainsfeld obviously just couldn't adjust to English football, and following an unsuccessful spell at Fulham, he was sold to Bochum in the German second tier. He stayed at Bochum for seven years, before signing for Germany's third division club, Roth in 2022, where he is still playing today. Number 5. Rio Miyachi Due to his pace and talent, Japanese winger was immediately compared to Theo Volkot when he was handed a contract in January 2011, but ultimately he made just 7 appearances for the first team. Arsenal have signed Miyachi after the forward had a successful trial with the club after he impressed at the Chukyo Dai Chuko High School in the All Japan High School Tournament, with Arsene Wenger saying, he had a trial with us in the summer and he has raw ability which has attracted many clubs around the world. I look forward to helping him fulfill his potential here. Wenger, who coached the Japanese side Grand Pusate before joining Arsenal in 1996, also said that it's very important that Asia is represented at our club. All in all, Miyachi never did enough to warrant a start at Arsenal in his four seasons at the club, but Wenger still believed in his potential and Arsenal constantly made him go out on loan, in hope that he could one day become a first team material. First it was Feyenoord, then Bolton, then Wigan and finally Twente before Arsenal decided to sell him on a permanent deal to Germany's second division club, St. Pauli, in 2015. He stayed there till 2019 and after his contract with them expired, he was a free agent for almost two years before joining Japanese club Yokohama Morinos in 2021, where he is still playing today. Number 4. Henrik Mikitarian. Henrik Mikitarian was brought to Arsenal as part of the swap deal which saw Alexis Sanchez move to Old Trafford in 2018. Despite showing glimpses of his quality, Mikitarian continued to swagger with the pace and physicality of the Premier League as he had done for Manchester United. Infamously, this deal worked out disastrously for both clubs and Mikitarian struggled for consistency during his 18 months with Arsenal, scoring just 8 Premier League goals. He was eventually sold to Roma in 2020 with his most iconic moment in red and white arguably coming during the official announcement of another January signing. He stayed at Roma till 2022 when he signed for Inter Milan, where he is still currently playing. Number 3. Wellington Silva Once described as new Neymar by fans and journalists, it is fair to say that Wellington Silva's career did not go in the desired direction. The Brazilian winger, now 30 years old, never made a senior appearance for Arsenal despite being at the club for almost 6 years. The Gunners brought Silva to the Premier League in December 2008, when he was just 15 years of age. But the deal proved problematic and was constantly delayed before eventually being agreed upon in January 2010 for 3.5 million pounds. But then new problems emerged for club and the player in 2011 when the English FA refused to grant the player a special talent visa, meaning that he failed to obtain the necessary work permit in order to play in England. After the decision from the FA, Arsenal decided to send the player on loan to Spain, where he spent five years playing for Levante, Alcoyano, Ponfedarina, 
Real Murcia and Almeria. And in 115 appearances across those five clubs, Silva managed to score 10 goals and provided 12 assists. In April 2015, Silva qualified for a Spanish passport, which automatically gave him the right to work in the UK. But unfortunately for him, Arsenal no longer had him in their plans, so they sent him out on another loan to join Bolton Wanderers for 2015-16 season. And after his contract ran down in 2016, Silva finally decided to return home, as he signed for Brazilian club Fluminense. Wellington Silva is now 30 years old and he currently plays for Japanese club Gamba Osaka. Number 2. Denis Suarez One-time Spanish international Denis Suarez joined the Gunners on a six-month loan in the 2019 January transfer window from Barcelona. In my opinion, this was probably the most bizarre transfer from Arsenal that I've ever seen. Denis Suarez made just six appearances for Arsenal during his time here and he played a grand total of 96 minutes for the club. Yes, you heard that right. So in total, we could say he played one full match for us during his time here. Unai Emery's tenure brought some strange additions to the side, but Denis Suarez might be the worst of the lot. If we're going to be honest, no one expected of him to be a starter for us. He was brought on to be a squad player and to offer us some depth in case we get hit by injuries. But then, shortly after joining, he suffered a groin injury just as Arsenal hit a bump and most of our other midfielders were already out injured. In the end, we dropped out of the top 4 and lost the Europa League final. So, just when he might have been needed, he was unavailable due to injury. Of course, Arsenal turned down the option to sign a player on a permanent deal and he returned to Spain where he joined Celta Vigo. He stayed there for 3 years, then went to Espanyol on loan and then he permanently moved to Villarreal last summer, where he is still playing today. And number 1, come on, you know who it is. The man, the myth, the legend. The one and only Kim Kallström. The Sweden international joined Arsenal on loan from Spartak Moscow in January 2014 with the broken back. Yes, he joined Arsenal in a deadline day deal on loan until the end of a season with a broken back. You just can't make this up. To this day, for many supporters and media outlets in general, it was one of the most bizarre signings of the Arsene Wenger era, especially after it was discovered that Karlström was carrying a back injury which showed up in a routine scan during his medical for Arsenal. But Arsene Wenger had no hesitations in sanctioning the move. Kallström eventually made his debut on March 25, 2014 against Swansea City in a 2-2 draw. In total, the Swede made just 4 appearances for Arsenal and he is best remembered for scoring a crucial penalty in an FA Cup semi-final win against Vigan Athletic. After his loan deal expired in the summer, Kallström returned to Russian side Spartak Moscow. And if you were wondering where Kim Kallström is today, well, after his spell with Spartak, he returned to Sweden and signed for Jurgardens, before officially hanging his boots in 2017. He has since completed the UEFA Executive Masters course for international players and is currently pursuing a career as a football manager. And that is all, so tell me, what are your thoughts? In your opinion, who was our worst January signing in the Premier League era? Do you agree with my list? Write down in the comments, I'd love to hear you out. Thank you for watching, thank you for joining in and once again, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.